Hey listeners, have I got some great news for you. For an equine are offering a 15% discount code to all eventing podcast listeners. And it's very simple. All you have to do is head to their website, pick out all the products that you'd like to buy. And when you get to the checkout, just type in the code Equiratings Podcast 15 to receive your discount. Happy shopping. Listeners, welcome again. And I mean, it is terribly sad, dreadfully sad. So our last in our mini series, it's our fourth episode with with the wonderful Louise Jones from Red Mills that once again I have persuaded to come and join us. Um, no, I've got a bit for the last one. Hopefully we'll get to do more in the future, Spike. Well, come on. Well, for starters, you need to go back and tell the powers that be at Red Mills that we need more of this. <laughs> and listeners, you need to you need to inundate me with with further questions and queries and anything that we can talk about because um, I I learn loads when we do these recordings and it's it's great to to speak to Louise about these things. So come on, we're going to make this happen. We're going to have another. We'll have a third mini series. It'll be brilliant. Um, this is our last one, and I, I was thinking about this because um, today I've been out vetting another horse for someone to to buy, and it all went well, and they purchased their new horse. I do get asked, you know, so what what am I going to feed it? You know, what do I do when I feed it when I get home? You know, do it do I just put it on what I've got, or do I have to go out and buy what they've been on before, or what, you know, what do you do, Louise? What do we do? <laughs> Well, look, getting a new horse, always exciting um, and always a little bit kind of, you know, nerve wracking as well in that, you know, you've, you've got a new animal on the premises. But I think at the very start, you hit it on the head. People go out, they vet their horses, they ride them. Um, and the same level of detail kind of should be given to nutrition. So we should be asking those questions before we purchase the horse and learning as much about their nutritional history as we can. So, you know, are they out of grass full time? Are they being fed conserved forage? What hard feed are they getting? How much are they getting? What supplements are they getting? Um, Have they had issues like, do they dislike a cube and will only eat a mix? Or if you feed them something, you know, like a chaff, do they, um have an issue with that so it's about getting as much history and insight as to what is currently being done and that will make that transition a hundred percent easier because you'll you'll have a baseline to go from and you'll be able to work off that and adjust accordingly given the new circumstances of of the horse in in your yard um if that has changed things for them and listeners, like I, I can't stress how badly this could go wrong if people don't put active thought into this process. You know, so I, you know, I, I do another, you know, I do loads of vettings and you know, however many a year, and you know, the for me the biggest issue and that biggest question is suitability, but also mm-hmm. that that can be that, that initial, you know, the first few weeks, first few months of buying a new horse and developing that new, you know, that new partnership is is just so key yeah and, and it can so easily go wrong yeah you couldn't get it just the like wrong. get yeah. the diet wrong affect temperament affect this affect that have some effect on the intestinal tract whether that be the stomach whether that be the hind gut you know all those sort of things you know like this yeah. could be something that could get yeah. you know you know really ser- you know really serious consequences when but you also buy a new horse you bring it home you change things and within a week it's colicking and you're you're faced with a massive vet bill because you've you know you've you've done something that is is not in in tune with how they have been fed so it really is vital that you get that that history and a plan in place prior to you purchasing that horse yeah it's just not the colic it's not even just the colic it's the temperament as well like you know you bring it back you put it on the wrong feed and you can't you know you can't ride one side of it sounds like we're sort of talking offhand about it guys but like it it that's the real world like it happens yeah, you know like exactly. you know buy a new horse you bring it home and you change everything the training uh-huh the surface the farrier the physio and you know and the one thing that you you know these things that you can have an influence on is is food and you know and i think that input from the nutritionist is is so important so 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 you can control it and i think so if you can find out what the the horse's sort of diet has been up until obviously you purchasing them so you know ask about their forage um ask about their management are they out of grass are they fed conserved forage you know if it's possible and it's not always possible but 
if it's possible, get some of the forage that they're being fed at their current owners, purchase it and bring it to your yard so that you can do that transition onto your forage slowly. Because we know that even something as simple as changing forage sources can have a big impact on gastrointestinal health. So, you know, buying a few bales of hay or, you know, a couple of bales of, of haylage and just sort of gradually doing that change can make a big, big difference. Equally, you know, think about the hard feed. And if you can, again, for the first few days or the week, first week that you've got the horse there, if you can keep them on the same base diet as in, in hard feed, that probably is sensible from a gastrointestinal point of view. You also obviously have to just take into account their workload. If they've been working quite hard and you're going to give them a relatively easy week when they first arrive, you're going to have to maybe reduce the amount that you're you're feeding them. Um, but try and maybe stay on that same food and then gradually transition. I think. What does, sorry, in practical terms, Louis. Sorry to interrupt. But what does that look like? You know, you know, if you're going to buy a couple of, you know, let's say they're on, you know, they're on a feed um and they want a particular balancer you know yeah. and do you you know you're gonna buy a couple of bags of that you know and a bag of the balancer and you you start on that but how do you try you know is it you know you do you go rather than a scoop of the old feed is it half a scoop of the old feed and half a scoop of the new feed or you know what how how does that look when you say that you gradually transfer so I usually say that you, you want to gradually transfer between sort of four to seven days. So, you know, you can start by replacing a small proportion of their their current feed with your new feed. Like a quarter is, is a good, that would give you a four day transition, um, replace a quarter and then, you know, the next day, another quarter, the next day, another quarter and, and the final day you're completely on your new food. I tend to, to say that four days is the minimum time. If I'm honest, I'd prefer it up at the sort of seven to 10 days. So in that case, you'd be replacing an eighth, an eighth and an eighth. It is a bit of a faff. Um, you know, it's it's annoying to have to, to do it when you've got a feed room with multiple bags of feed. But in terms of your horse's health, it is much better to do it gradually. Um, and, you know, it's only 10 days um, and just transition it, you know, slowly. Um, so, you know, some people will say that they'll replace the breakfast, but not the midday and the evening meal. They'll do it like that. Others will replace a proportion of each meal with the, the new feed. Um, so it just depends a little bit on what's practical in your circumstances. Yeah, no, I think that's, but it's it, it's nice to be able to sort of drill that down into what is the real practicalities of it, because as you say, you know, often the advice is, I'll oh, just gradually change over, but what does that look like to to people to have to yeah. work out every day? Um, yeah, and I and I love that bit of advice about trying to sort of, <laughs> I love I love the idea of turning up to pick up your new horse and going, can I have a, can I have a bag of can I have a yeah. bale of your hay as well, take with you, you know, if you've got you a bag of feed, that'd be nice. Yet, but, you know, so, um, yeah. <laughs> what about the rug and the saddle? It was you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but I'll, it can make a lot. massive difference. You know, <laughs> yeah. forage is is sixty, you know, fifty, sixty percent of your horse's diet. And they we're all really good at changing the hard feed slowly and we forget about the forage. So it can make a really big difference. So yeah, be a little bit cheeky and ask for, for a bale of hay or um some haylage and, and just gradually do it if you can. It's not always possible. I appreciate that, but yeah. Well, with the price of horses at the moment, I suspect they forked out thousands to to buy the horse. So a bale of hay wouldn't seem like a bad thing to just sweeten the deal. So, um, yeah, I think that's all, you know, that I think that's the basis of the advice, isn't it? But I mean, yeah. I, but it's again, it's as with so many things, isn't it? It's having a conscious thought about it, isn't it? You know, I'm yeah, consciously thinking about what, what I'm going to feed my new horse and how I'm going to bring it into its yeah. new diet and how I'm going to, it, you know, in, you know, bring it into, into its new environment and its new life. So, um, yeah. And yeah. I think you know, there are cases where you, they're rare, I would say, in, in the sort of people that we're speaking to, but there are cases where they buy horses and you don't know what they're being fed um, or you don't have a clear understanding or history of them. And in those cases, back to the, the temperament issue spike, I would always say you're better off starting on a feed that is low starch, very much based around the slow release energy sources. So 
something like our our horse care range where you know it's it's not going to be um very cereal based um it's going to be low starch that's going to be a better option it's always easier to step up once you get to know the horse and you've got your confidence as a partnership but stepping back from potentially a bad experience is a lot harder so i would always say err on the side of caution and maybe look at, at those sort of lower starch feeds as i say the horse care range um is a great one and actually the the horse care range also contains the the care package so that includes things like yeast and prebiotics um so that can be very useful when your horse is going from one environment to another just to help um the the gut adjust to the changes in management and routine and and different diets so um there's some beneficial ingredients in that range as well that can just help the horse to adjust to the stress you know of of moving yards um so yeah start start safely and build it up um is is a good option if you're not sure what they've been fed up until you got them oh right so basically I'm going to have to just advise any horse that I vet successfully to listen to this podcast because this is a situation where we can try and avoid, you know, bad things happening or, you know, you know, that first, as we were saying, those first few weeks, that first month or so, to, you know, developing that new relationship is just so key when you're buying a horse, you know, and that's at every level, guys, like that's it, you know, whether that be grassroots eventing up to the highest level, you know, it can be, it can quite quickly go wrong, you know, if you don't have a, have a conscious thought and, you know, that attention to detail about what, you know, what that feed is and what that, you know, particularly the forage is, is so key, so important. Yeah. So the first podcast that we did, Spike, you mentioned about monitoring things like body condition, um, top line, that sort of thing. With the new horse, again, that's absolutely critical because, you know, you are going to have to adjust their diets depending on what you're doing, depending on how they're coping in the environment. So, you know, weighing them, using a weigh tape regularly, monitoring their top line, that's going to help you to very quickly adjust their diet to suit their needs rather than it getting to a point where you're thinking, God, this is too lean or it's lost a lot of top line. Yeah, that's a really good point. You know, like, you know, benchmark exactly what you've got when you've got your new horse, you know, because, you know, if you're, you know, in a month's time, if you're, you know, if your top line's reducing and your overall weight is reducing, then you can start making those adjustments you know, quite, you know, quite quickly, really. So yeah. Um, Yeah, no, that's really applicable, isn't it? You know, and I think that's something that we talk about a lot. It sounds like a broken record on these, uh, on these podcasts, but, you know, benchmarking what you've got, really asking that question about what I'm trying to achieve. Um, But yeah, that's really applicable to this, this situation, you know, buying a new horse, which is, you know, full of excitement and full of, uh, you know, full of, you know, hope and expectation of what the future might bring. But um, yeah, calm it down work out what you what what's been done before try not to change things there's so many changes going on and if we can try and keep as as many things consistent as possible then that's got to be that's that's a really really useful thing to be able to do oh louise this is the fourth and final one of our little (laughs) mini series enjoyed it so much thank you yeah so much for you know so much from red mills for their ongoing support thank you louise for like you're just so full of really you know, so f- full of amazing information, but also really practical and useful advice for people as well, which I think is such a great balance. And uh, and listeners, I really hope you all appreciated that. Um, Louise, you are a star. I look forward to being able to do this again with you in the in the not too distant future. I hope you've enjoyed it. Yeah, thoroughly enjoyed myself. Lovely to to chat to you again, Spike. And I hope all your listeners have uh, gleaned some little pieces of information that that will help them. So, um, and we're always here if they need to to contact anybody and they want to speak to to a nutritionist. They can just contact us through the through the website. Louise, you're amazing. Red Mills, you're still a, you know always amazing. Thank you for your support. Uh, and listeners, we'll be back again soon. Um, keep chucking out ideas. I keep trying to think of new things and new uh new new ideas to kind of bring to the whole box so that we can keep yeah just just finding some sort of different aspects of the veterinary world to bring you and how that interlinks with with eventing and and you know the professional horse sports so um i hope you've all enjoyed it it's been a brilliant series really enjoyed it myself and uh we'll we'll be back soon